We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, the best way for questions to come to us is through the website. That way they don't get lost. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. Today, we're, t we're back to talking about kids' games. Dylan Zimmerman writes, question for you. Friend asked me, as the board game person she knows, she's looking for games that for three that can be played with a toddler aged third player. What was good with your family around that age? Well, thanks for the question, Dylan. Uh, let's see if we can hook your friend up with some great board games for playing with a toddler. But first, I want to start with our usual disclaimer. Whenever we're giving recommendations for kids, I think this needs to be said. All kids are different. They learn at different rates, and children of the same age may have widely different skill levels. Like, to be honest, this is one of the things that shocked me as a parent when my second child came around. Just how different my two girls are, and how they've been as they grow up, and where they hit various milestones has been so completely different between the two. We're both parents with experience in this, but we're also both privileged white males with all the baggage and privilege that entails for us and our families. Now, because of the fact that everyone's kids are different, it's really hard to tell you like what the perfect game is, what the perfect three-player game is for your family. In general, though, what I do suggest is start off simple. Start with the easy games, just one or two gaming concepts you're going to introduce to your toddlers, right? Like counting or colors or matching or taking turns or something like that. If your kiddo seems to be rocking it, move on to something more complicated. There are going to be toddlers out there that are going to be happy with just rolling some dice or maybe matching some colors. And while we've all heard the stories about that one gamer parent whose three-year-old plays Power Grid, both are valid and cool. Just don't be that parent that forces the heavier and heavier games on their kids because the parent wants someone to play with. Base this on the child's enjoyment and skill level, not yours. If you're gaming with a young child, you should be gaming for that young child, not for yourself. So tonight, I'm going to suggest some games of various skill levels. I'm going to start off with five games that we bought and played with our girls. And then I'm going to talk about some other great looking games that either weren't out or we didn't find or were games that, that weren't available locally or we just hadn't heard about when our kids were younger. Now, Dylan is specifically looking for three player games. Every game we're going to talk about is great with three players. The thing is, most of them are going to be great with more or less than that as well. So this ought to be list 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 ought to be useful for anyone looking to play some games with toddlers. Now I'm going to start off, and these are going to go in progression of simple to difficult. Though difficult meaning uh, more complicated is a better word than difficult. These none of these games are difficult. But we're going to start off with the simpler ones. So like I said, if you're going to start off, start off with something simple, and then move on to something more advanced. We're going to start with the simple side. And I'm going to start off with two games from Blue Orange Games. Now, Blue Orange Games is a fantastic company, great kids games, as well as great games for adults. They kind of do the whole gamut. They tend to stick to family weight games over heavy euros, but they were great when my kids were little, especially my first one was born. They were the company that we found first, like the first non-mass -mar market game manufacturer that we discovered as parents. They make great looking games for kids that all have amazing bright colored components. They're all made of wood. And the two games I'm going to mention even came in wooden storage boxes. Yeah. <clears throat> While they're becoming more mass market, some of the younger aimed products can be, still be a little bit harder to find mm -hmm. compared to their adult counterparts. Now, in Canada, at least, Mastermind Toys or Scholar's Choice are both great uh, stores aimed at the educational and, and teacher market. They're mm -hmm. great places to go for those younger aimed products that you can't always find on shelves. And also your local friendly local game store should be able to get in blue orange games because of the fact they also do modern hobby, board, right? They're behind planet, which I've raved about a hundred thousand times on the show. So that's also a good source. You probably won't find them at your uh, Toys R Us. Yes, we still have those in Canada um, or uh, Walmart or Target for those. Uh, those I don't know if we have in Canada. We don't have them here anymore. I think they're gone no, out of the country. Gone. Yeah, that's what I thought. They were out of Windsor quick. So hey, Blue Orange Games. So the first of the two recommendations I have from them, and I got to admit, this is not an amazing game. When you're at toddler level, you're not going to get the games that are also great for parents. But thankfully, I find these games tolerable as a parent. 
And the first one's Ben Domino Jr. This is a super simple matching game with curved dominoes where you're matching pitchers and colors instead of pips. And it's pitchers and colors all match. So like it's always the same pitcher on the same color. So it's not even like you're matching two different things. It's about as basic as it goes. This one plays just as well with two, three or four players. Uh, what I do recommend though, is if you try this with your toddler and they get it really quickly, consider moving up to just Ben Dominoes instead of Ben Domino Jr. Uh, this also blue orange games. And this just uses standard domino styles with pips on them. So then you're tying in counting skills as well as matching. Yeah, no, absolutely. This is a, a great game and the, the shapes are fun. So even if you're even yep. if they're they're ready for dominoes, the, the fact that you're getting the curly shapes as opposed to just the straight lines with dominoes makes a huge difference uh, and, and keeping them interested. Plus, the curves do matter a bit because you can't come curve back on yourself. So it does add a little more strategy than instead of just matching. Now, my second Blue Orange game recommendation is a game called Bingery. Spelled like bingo with R-Y at the end. Now, this is a memory game with a twist, where your typical memory game is a bunch of tiles or cards, and you flip one and then flip another. If they match, you keep them. This isn't like that. This, instead, you're trying to find the four images that are on your personal bingo card. Again, this is a wooden card, like a wooden player board. And then you're going to flip a tile, and if it matches your bingo board, you catch it, and the first person to fill their bingo board wins. What I actually liked about this, and I found my kids got way more engaged in this than memory, was because... They were only looking for four shapes, like the four symbols that are on their board, so they could focus on that. And man, seeing how excited they would get, like I have two sisters, right? When one would, the other one would flip over the one the first one needed, like, oh, you found my thing. And then trying to remember where that is. I thought that that was the, the real draw to this, which like for my girls was way better than any of the typical card-based memory games. Now, this one is pretty. There's no question there. It's really great components. And, and while fun... I, I'm not sure if it doesn't have a shorter, enjoyable lifespan than a normal memory game. Now, again, based on my kids, my kids tended to play memory games solo. And honestly, okay. we'll still, to this day, at 12 and 10, pull out the old memory game we have and play it. So, again, this is one of those things where everyone's kids are different. Um, and you just need to find out what's going to be right for your kids. So, up next... I have a game called Laundry Jumble. Now, I have to apologize for this one because this was my kids' favorite game. They loved this game, but it seems to be very out of print. Uh, this game is hard to describe because it's this washing machine that's kind of cube-shaped, and it's made out of uh, some kind of material, not fabric, but like that, I don't know, plasticky material. And then it's got felt over like where the clothes would go in, your hand can go in it. And then it comes with a bunch of um, small articles of clothing in different shapes and sizes, and they're all made of different fabrics and textures. Each turn, the players draw a card and then reach into the laundry machine and try to pull out the matching article of clothing. So they're trying to find like the jacket or whatever. And of course they have to watch out for the skunk sundies, which man, did my kids think that is hilarious. Yeah, we did mention this one in a previous episode, episode and we really haven't been able to find it. Now, I did find a store online that claims to have it in stock, and that's Kidit, K-I-D-D-I-T dot com, uh, and just slash laundry, laundry jumble. But whether or not they actually have that in stock, because a lot of uh, uh, websites advertise the game, mm -hmm. but don't have it in stock. This one actually says they have stock of it. You know, well, it's possible. It's, it, in my guess, it would have to be new old stock. Like, I don't yeah. think this game is currently being made, no, it is but there could be an old toy store that's just been around for forever. Yep. And that was Laundry Jumble. Got to remember, we got to mention the name of the game at the end of talking about it. I got to try to remember to do that because I hate it when other podcasts don't do it because I always tune in partway through and I'm like, what game were they talking about? Oh, they didn't say it again. We'll try to get better at that. I got to start doing that in the show notes. All right, uh, the way I think this is pronounced is Panda Bo. It's all one word. It's Panda, B-O, not Body Odor. That'd be a very different game. I guess then you need the laundry game. So Panda Bo. Uh, this is from Hape, which is a company I always get confused with Haba because Haba, Hape, there are three-letter words, and there's literally like two letters difference. They just look similar. There are also companies that – both are companies that make wooden toys and also do kids' games. So this one's from Hape, H-A-P-E. Uh, Panda Bo is a very simple dexterity game where you have this rounded panda meeple. It, it's it's large. It's it's not meeple size. It's big. This is this panda that's laying on its back, and its back's round, so it kind of wobbles. 
and you're putting sticks of bamboo onto it, and you're trying not to be the player that causes the panda to tip over. Uh, sticks are various lengths, thicknesses, and weights, and there's a die used to determine how many sticks are placed each turn. Uh, personally, I think this is a great intro to stacking-style dexterity games, that the pieces are big enough and easy to manipulate where it's good at a toddler level, instead of going to something that I think you need probably a preschool or a grade school level that are some of the, the more fiddly dexterity games, say like Gokuku, which is not on this list. Now, to be fair, Amazon seems to confuse Hape and Haba as well, so your searches will get muddled. Now, this one, depending on your child's physical level, can be played from very early on. Mm -hmm. Though, if you go early enough, you might want to skip the die aspect for the child and either do that for them or just pick things up. Uh, and then once introduce the die mm -hmm. a little later on. And that was Pandabo. All right. So we mentioned Haba. I want to talk a bit about Haba because Haba to me now is the first place you should look when trying to find great games for toddlers. This wasn't the case when I, when my kids were young, just they weren't available, but, and they've released more games in North America. So this is a German company. It was a German toy maker that expanded out into the world and started making kids toys. Now, in this case, they do only do kids toys. Uh, like even the games are, are targeted at kids and they have learning games. But what they have is a line called My Very First Games. That These are perfect for toddlers. Like literally you could just go to Haba and buy all the My Very First Games and that could be the entire list for today's episode. Now this didn't exist when my girls were young. So we didn't get to check them out, uh, these very first games. But the game we did get, which is something that, this is probably the highest on the skill level. This one's going to take some some teaching and some advanced skills. And that's a game called Monza. This is a racing game from Haba. I, in the game, the players roll a set of dice and the dice have colors on them. And then they're going to match the colors on the dice to spots on the racetrack. And then they can move their car forward, assuming they have the right matching dice. So you're trying to line your dice and patterns and match patterns on the racetrack to get your car ahead. Now, this not only teaches colors and rolling dice and taking turns, but also pattern recognition and planning ahead. Because you may see a really simple move now that actually puts you in a bad place later or you can plan ahead and take a little shortcut now so you have a better move later to me this is the game that kills Candyland. if you just want to you play you play a color to move on a color this is the, the the advanced version of that that's more fun of all the games we talked about this is the one that i say is the most engaging for adults to play as well there is a an actual game here more than just matching things or trying to get colors now Going back to the Haba, what I found is fantastic. Even if you're not going to buy from Amazon, even if you hate Amazon, if you go to Amazon and search for Haba, that's H-A-B-A, -A, down the side, they have a list of appropriate age ranges. And so you just, if you're looking for something, you go, you search by Haba, click on that age range box, and you're going to find some amazing options. And you'll that, they automatically include hate because Amazon gets them confused as well. <laughs> so you get the full list of Haba and Hape ranges for your uh, age range that you're looking for all in one search. It works That's out a, great. There, there's a life hack for you or gaming hack, a game mm -hmm. hack. That's a good one. That's excellent. All right. So those are the, the, the five games that my girls played and had a great time with. Like I, these were all surefire wins. So the next five games I'm going to mention aren't games we owned but are rather games that I would be looking at picking up if I were buying games for a toddler now. Now, the first two come from that whole My First Games line from Haba. Like I said, you could basically use that as a shopping list. Uh, the number one My First Game that I think you'd, I'd want to pick up is Animal Upon Animal. This is an extremely simple stacking game using cute wooden animals, uses a die roll to determine which animal you have to stack. Like, I actually recommend this no, now over Panda Boat for first dexterity games, because these are much chunkier. These, these are basically almost building block size animals you're stacking. And then I also strongly recommend the regular Animal Upon Animal game for when your child's ready to move on. And I would just go buy that now because it is so fun to play with adults that you may as well just have it in your collection. And then when your kids moved on from the, my first Animal Upon Animal, you're like, here, you want to try daddy's version? Here's the adult version of Animal Upon Animal. Because that game is great. Like, I, I play that regularly just with friends. So the full name of this is Haba Animal Upon Animal Small and Yet Great! Exclamation mark. Because searching okay. animal on animal might not be something you want in your search history. Just saying. Animal upon tends to be a little <laughs> better. The the um, 
people who, who do the other don't tend to have quite as good grammar. There you go. <laughs> if you search on Amazon, though, you'll you'll probably find both. Now, my second very first game pick would be a game called First Orchard. Uh, this game has been around for 30 years in Germany, is just starting to be popular here. And this comes from everyone's recommendation and everyone being like all my social media feed. Because anytime I talk about kids games, someone points out that this is the first game I bought my kids and it was amazing. What's great about this game is that it's cooperative and you don't find that in kids games very often. And especially at that age, I know my girls were all about, I want everyone to win. We want it together and it's great to see kids board games supporting that. But had I been able to find this in Canada back when my girls were younger, I'm certain I would have picked this up. Yeah. Not only great as a game, but it's also fun for free play. And uh, the, the game actually comes with instructions and, or not instructions, but you know, guidelines for playing mm -hmm. as, uh, as playing with it as free play. And that was uh, First Orchard. And next I have, I think it's pronounced Zimbos, because there's two Bs, Z-I-M-B-B-O-S with an exclamation mark. So I get Zimbos, or Zimbos. Now, a local game store, a friendly local game store that closed up shop quite a few years ago, I miss you, Huni Munin, I uh, used to have this game on display in the store. And anytime I went to the store with my girls, they rushed over to this game and started playing with these great zoo animal shaped blocks. And I honestly can't tell you anything about this game, but my kids were obsessed with this. They would ask to go to the store to play with the zoo game. Uh, this is by Blue Orange Games. So again, that gives it a thumbs up because you know but it's blue orange is going to be a solid game kids were hooked on this game before we even brought it home yeah. so think gamified card tower building but with big child friendly elephants i mean how can you go wrong and that was zimbos <laughs> all right this one gets a shout out to someone in our chat room hoot owl hoot this one actually comes recommended by one of our patreon backer brian kurtz uh this is a cooperative game that's great for young children in this color co coordinated matching game players work together to help fly owls back to their nests before the sun comes up by playing cards of the appropriate colors and acting in the proper order now my only complaint about this one is i gotta say i don't like the look of it it's a really drab looking game and what I was thinking would be an awesome upgrade for this is if you go pick up some plastic owls, some toy owls, like those ones from Slitch or Slitch or however that's pronounced, you can now find those everywhere. Or even like the 10 cent bottle of animal, you can find some of those with owls in it. I think that would just kick this game up a notch. But the gameplay supposedly is great. I have not tried this myself, but every time I talk about kids games, including tonight in our chat, Brian points out how good Hoot Owl Hoot was for his kids. Yeah, no, and uh, I have to say the, the comments on BGG back it up. Um, you know, it's not a difficult game, obviously, um, and it's not super high rated from games, but you know what? The people are around there are saying, you know, this is great for kids. This is great for kids. This is great for kids, granddaughters, kids, yeah. you know, it's just well loved. Yeah, unfortunately, my, my kids, it seems like they're too old for it. The age range definitely is in the lower, the lower preschool and my kids are well past preschool at this point. And that was Hoot Owl Hoot. All right. Last game on my list. Uh, this is Pengaloo. This is a memory and color matching game from Blue Orange Games. Uh, this has won a ton of awards. There are so many gold stickers on the front of this box, you almost can't see the art. Uh, it includes the Dr. Toy Award, the Best Toy Award. Um, there's a ton. Uh, the main mechanics here are dice and memory, but there's also an advanced set of rules, which is the complete opposite of that co-op thing. And this is adding Take That. So this is something I would think is for more advanced toddlers or toddlers at a more advanced skill level. I shouldn't say more advanced toddlers, but some are who are ahead and who enjoy that extra level of competition. Because in this one, you can steal eggs from another player, which gets that whole stealing from each other, which I know is something my kids would have hated. Now, I haven't tried this one myself, but man, do the components look awesome in this game. Yeah, I have to say, if I was picking up a memory game for my family, this would probably be more what I went to as opposed to uh, Bingery. Yeah, Bingery was definitely like age two and three. Like right. that was the the very easy, almost like that's when we're teaching things like taking turns, right? right? <laughs> At that point. And that was Pengaloo, the last game in our list of games for uh, kids. And uh, yeah, let's check three back into the Three player games lobby. good for toddlers. Yeah. So uh, Brian has also recommended Hiss. That's Hiss with three S's and I believe an exclamation mark. That's a card mark. game. Uh, from Game Right. 
I've heard of that one. I know. I, I think that's another cooperative card based game, but I have not played that one. Yeah. From what another one I was thinking is probably good is uh, Orchard instead of my first Orchard, which I guess is a good version of Hi Ho Cherio, which we grew up with. Which I remember liking Hi Ho Cherio as a kid, but if I remember correctly, literally you're just spinning a spinner. And like it, it's it's not predetermined, but it's 100% random. Right. But I remember loving the components and playing with the cherries. Um, another one that Deanna recommended, there was one. There was an honorable mention. I know she threw it in the chat and I'm missing it. Oh, yes. Uh, where'd it go? Um, Sleepy Princess Pile. Yes. yes. Oh, Sleepy, Sleepy Princess, Princess Pile, Pile, Up. Pile Up from Haba. Which, oh my God, looks so cute. Yeah. I, I don't know how the game's played, but it looks like you're trying to put different cushions on top of the pea and not having the bed fall over. That's my guess. Um, there was another one she linked that was a dexterity guy on Amazon earlier today that looked really neat, too. Maybe she can drop that one to the chat. Yeah, it was, I gotta admit, for doing this particular topic, it was difficult because when I first started answering this question in my head, I was thinking of games for preschoolers and early grade school. And I was totally going to talk about Goku, King of the Dice, and some of these modern games that I got to try. Uh, there's a game from Haba, Dragon Valley, I think it's called, and it's all about there's a bunch of crystals trapped in ice and the mama dragon breeze on them and you bet on how many crystals and they all look great. And Deanna's the one that pointed out, she's like, whoa, whoa, you're thinking too old because you got to remember kids can choke and they're going to put these in their mouth. And she reminded me about uh, little G because she had an oral fixation when she was younger and would put everything in her mouth. And we had a few scares over the years. So uh, I had to adjust the list. So it was actually a little more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I'm like, oh, wait. Uh, also, the uh, the Sleepy Princess pileup also goes by the name Sleepy Princess and the P. Okay, so it's. Uh... I see Brian has corrected me. Sorry, Hiss is competitive. Components are cardboard, but they're sort of like cards. So you match colors of snake segments. If you complete a snake, the head, body, a variable length, and a tail, then you win that snake. Goal is to win the most snake tiles. Okay, that's totally not the game I was thinking of. There is a card game people have recommended a, a cooperative kids card game. And uh, snail and race, a Ravensburger's snail race. Yeah, yeah, that one's like fifty on Amazon. T Tabletop deals was sharing that one today. Uh, interesting. When I when I was actually uh, looking up looking up Hi Ho Cherry, uh, games that have not aged well, they did a VHS <laughs> version of Hi Ho Cherry. <laughs> VHS. Version. How many how many VCR VHS games did they come out with that are just completely useless now? Not that they were all that useful in the first place, to be honest, but... Well, yes. Uh, yeah, that There's, was... There's uh, Flip Flory, is it? No, it's Bruce Vogue of the... Ah, oh, I feel bad. I'm forgetting names here of other podcasters, and I know this. The Party Game Cast, featuring the Party Game Cast. Right. Where they talk about party games, and they have a one of those TVs with the VHS player in it, and they bring it to cons. And they play these games, and I guess one of the best ever is the tar Star Trek The Next Generation VHS game, I guess is like phenomenal. And then the old classic Atmosphere and Dragon Strike, a D&D game, and they actually bring them out. So one Deanna wanted to recommend to me earlier was Znoet, Z-N-O-E-T, sliding board game that I got to say looks really cute. Uh, she dropped a link in the chat. It's not cheap. But it's this sliding game where you're trying to slide pogs into the appropriate sliders. There's a bunny, a dog, and I, I think that's a lion or a tiger. Uh, li that's got to be lion. Got to be. Yeah, it's got to be a lion. Yeah, bunny, with dog, that. and you're lion. Trying, you're trying to slide them into the appropriate slot. Yeah. Like really cute for a kid's dexterity game, but not cheap. Yeah. It, it, it is really well made. It's a folding case. Um, so, yeah, it's not surprising that it's it's pricey because it's uh, it's quality works. Yeah, really it looks nice. really good. Workmanship, yeah. And we, when we were that old, we played with my parents' version of um, Rebound. Yep, yep. Which we totally could have choked on those pieces. <laughs> Thankfully, we didn't put a lot of stuff in our mouths. Yep. All right, so that's it for this week's Ask the Bellhop. If you'd like to read more game, gaming, and game night topics like this, be sure to check out the blog at tabletopbellhop.com and click on Gaming Advice. If you've got questions for us, remember, Head to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or just fire us with an email, questions at tabletopbellhop.com. We can always use more questions.